my girlfriend staying with me this week because my place is much closer to her office than hers is and so I don't really have the same morning routine so I'm going to squeeze this in but I was thinking about uh, something that crossed my desk this morning with respect to writer's block and it was sort of an assertion that writer's block is a thing for real and it's like yeah sure um, it's sort of refuted some arguments about how uh, you know people would be like oh if you're you don't have writer's block you, you're just a wuss <laughs> if you were strong enough you could just do it and power through and I think like I've written about writer's block and actually the author came up with some you know had some useful points about how uh, you know there could be physiological issues there could be sort of psychological issues like your you know extreme stress or grief or something like that and fatigue and being tired and so on but I guess the thing that has bothered me about the concept of writer's block really actually kind of does dovetail into the sort of the refuters of that of the concept to the extent that I don't actually think it's like an obstacle or a um, you know, an impediment, but like a lacuna. And the narrative when it comes to writer's block is like, oh, if only I was, you know, if only I had the willpower, if only I was like, you know, fortuitous enough, I could just get over it. I just got to sit, you know, it's like the, you're not allowed to leave the table until you finished all your liver and onions or whatever kind of, uh, you know, archetype or trope or whatever you want to call it and it's just I think at least some of the time writer's block is like writer's gap and it sort of depends I think on your paradigm like how you think like how you believe you know creative work is done and I think it's sort of like if you're, you know, one of the believers of like this sort of like you're the sort of ex nihilo fount of, of, of creativity that you're, you know, it's just uh, it's from it comes from inside you and you, in, in your maybe you're plugged or something like that. And you just have to like unblock the block. But I just don't believe that's how it works. I think it's more like. I take in information and I uh, do stuff with it in my brain hole and then I transform it into something and really for me it sort of reduces to the unsubstitutability of information like the only time information is substitutable is if you can derive it from other information. And um, so what that entails, what that implies is that if you took that, if you had that point of view, then the thing to do if your quote unquote writer is blocked is to not try to write and, and go and try to fill the hole, the gap because you're not going to get any new information from just sitting there or like staring at a blank screen. And um, one of the other things the, the author had in the, in the piece, which I'll link to, um, was about procrastination. Like, oh, like the part of the reason why you're not writing is because of procrastination. And it's like, I think at least some of the time, this, this is another related concept, like procrastination when you go and you look at the etymology of the term, it's like put off until tomorrow and it's like motivated by this laziness, basically. And I think a lot of the time when we're, you know, not doing the thing that we should be doing, we're doing something else. And, you know, we've seen all sorts of stuff written about like quote unquote productive procrastination and so on. I think that that's just a symptom like what you're doing if you're doing something else instead of the thing you should be doing is like actually foraging for new for for other information or otherwise you're doing a thing that is useful in lieu of 
foraging for information. And I think it really just reduces to foraging for information. Anyway, gonna finish my coffee.